If you wanted to throw in a dynasty, you have to be mistake free. And Montana was not today with three turnovers, four 60 plus yard touchdown runs allowed by this Grizz defense. Literally a week ago today, they left Boise with the Big Sky Championship. But with all the hubbub and the send off and seeing their names pop up on selection Sunday, now their focus remains singular. Yeah, I don't, don't think a it. tennis ball can send someone to the hospital, but we'll find out. <laughs> Yep. What was their reaction on the East Coast to when you told them and that, yeah, I literally have a bear in my apartment? Bewilderment. Uh, they saw my tweet and uh, everyone was asking and my mom FaceTimed me, get away from the thing, get away. <laughs> I'm like, mom, the game warden's here. They got it. We're good. <laughs> well, the Montana Grizzly men's tennis team is gearing up for the conference championships next week down in Phoenix. And tonight we bring you a closer look at the adversity the team has faced and how it's brought them together. Tennis is a way of being one of the more truly solitary sports, but when you have your brother on the team, it makes it feel like you're not alone. I remember there's this really funny picture of him as a toddler holding a tennis racket, and we're playing doubles together. Um, and I'm just in the background, like, all locked in and serious, and he's just kind of standing there, like, just happy to be there. So we've been playing tennis together since he was two and I was five. Growing up in Whitefish, Jake and Josh Watkins had plenty of battles on the tennis court, but it also brought them together but never more so than playing for their hometown Grizz. They were living the dream until for Jake, it became a nightmare. He was having a lot of abdominal pain. So he called me later that night and just said like, my, we take me to the ER. Um, we thought it was his appendix accident actually. And then the next day, uh, next few days were just kind of a whirlwind. He was taken in for uh, surgery. Jake was diagnosed with Burkitt lymphoma, an aggressive cancer one rarely found in college athletes. It's treatable. But there's a long road ahead. He's obviously struggling right now, but he does. He did have me promise that I would finish out the semester strong. So we're, we're both trying to get into med school, and my senior year is pretty important academically. So that's I've tried my best to focus on my studies, even though it's been pretty difficult. It's hard for Josh to comprehend what his brother is going through, but his head coach Jason Brown, unfortunately, understands it completely. I'm. Uh just coming up on 10 years uh, in remission. His chemo was in the same chair I started mine in and I got to go sit with him and, and spend some time and, and walk him through some of this stuff just from my personal experience. And he's got a rougher go than I did, um, but he's a really tough kid. So uh, yeah, uh, I know he'll beat it too. A month ago, Brown was coaching Jake on his tennis skills, but being a coach now takes on a much different meaning. If I can ease it up a little bit by giving him some good ideas on how to combat, you know, the nausea through chemo or the combat some of the mental aspects of I can't believe I'm sick. I mean, that's a huge hurdle to get over is like, how, why me and how did this happen? And especially for a kid who's, you know, I mean, young, fit, healthy, would have never guessed something like this can happen. And but Josh isn't Jake's only brother on the team as matching haircuts prove that they were all in this fight together. There was no thinking about it. It was obviously we're going to do it. Nobody had to be convinced. Um, everybody wanted to show his support to Jake. And I think it turned out pretty, pretty nice. And uh, I think it's just a nice gesture um, to show that we're full support of him. The Watkins brothers have been playing tennis together for a long time and plan to keep it that way once Jake recovers. He, he started talking right away about how this is going to help him mentally on the court, that he'll be able to fight through anything. And I said, absolutely embrace that. And hopefully his teammates will as well. Chris on three. One, two, three. Chris. Fun afternoon, Cats try to pull the sweep against the Cats, the Bobcats against the Wildcats, that is. Starts with Darius Brown, and he was just letting them fly all day. Drains the three, and that puts MSU up nine early in this one. And then it was time for the dunk show. Brown to Raekwon, battle for the alley-oop, and it was just getting started. I think the slam dunk contest came earlier this year, and then Darius Brown with the steal, Raekwon battle, look out below, that's a windmill slam. The bench was fired up, Danny Sprinkle was fired up, how could you not be? Take another look at this, Brown with the awesome hustle play, battle, hello, and uh, doing his best John Moran impression tonight. Now closing seconds of the half, they had to do it again. Brown to battle. They closed the first half on a 14-0 run. They win it easily, 67-52. Bobcats sweep the weekend. Meanwhile, in Missoula, Grizz trying to get back on track after a brutal loss to the Wildcats on Thursday. And it all started with Jackson Knapp. 
puts his defender to sleep and goes to the basket for two to build UM's lead early. And uh, it was just getting started for the Grizz. Deshaun Thomas loses the handle, but he's able to get it back, hit the jumper with the shot clock winding down from the baseline. And then the Grizz wanted to do some dunking too. Highlight of the night, Josh Bannon forcing the steal two on one with Lonel Martin. Look out below. Oh my goodness, take another look, this time in uh, slow motion. Martin, Bannon, beauty. And uh, that would build the Grizz lead to 12 at that point. In the last couple minutes of the half, Bannon firing a cross court on and Moody splashes the three. The Grizz hit seven first half threes, shoot 59% in the opening 20, and they roll to a bounce back win over the Bengals. It's homecoming, got a crown of king and queen at the half, but on the field, the Maroons trying to dethrone the King. That's Hamilton, the defending Class A champs. Way easier said than done. We're throwing hats around, and Hamilton was just running the ball around. Isaiah Vandebon gets open, shows no regard for Maroon life as he struts into the end zone, does a little dirty dancing celebration for good measure. He's having the time of his life. Next series, it's a power sweep to the left sideline. Andrew Frederick gets the rock. Gets the block, gets to walk right into pay dirt for six more. Champs aren't done yet, though. Bowder floats a beauty right into the open arms of Eli Taylor. It's all Hamilton all night long. Bronx, Stampede the Maroons, spoiled their homecoming 42 to nothing.